Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about uh, more stuff for Python typing. We're going to be talking about the final annotation as well as the final decorator. Um, they're very closely related so we're just going to cover them both at the same time. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. So they, they kind of have two or three different distinct uh, meanings. So let's talk about each of those meanings separately. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is capitalized final at the module scope. So we're going to do a little sample Python file. I've already installed MyPy in a virtual env, so you can see I'm using MyPy version 790. And we're going to do from typing import capital final. And we're going to assign some global constant variable uh, with the final annotation to some number. Um, this is just the conventional naming for the constant. It's all capitalizations. It doesn't have to be called const. I should probably just call it foo. There we go. Sample variable name. Um, and what final acts like in this context is very similar to the conct keyword in JavaScript. Uh, if you're familiar with JavaScript. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, which is fine, it basically means that this variable should not be reassigned anywhere else. Um, and note that final doesn't do any runtime checking, so this is entirely an annotation for a type checker and not for the actual runtime of the code. Nothing actually prevents you from reassigning this variable. Uh, but if I were to do, you know, foo final equals five, and then I were to reassign foo to six, and then run this through, uh, well, you know, print foo. If we were to actually run this program, you'll notice that, um, you know, it, it allows us to reassign this global variable, even though it's assigned uh, final. But if we were to type check this program, MyPy will tell us that, you know, we cannot reassign to a final name foo. That's kind of the first usage of final. Um, I find in my code that this is not super helpful. Like this can prevent some bugs where like you have a lot of a lot of constants up at the top of your file and you accidentally name another one the same as another. It can help you prevent a bug there. Um, but I find that this annotation actually isn't that useful personally. So I, I, <laughs> I've literally never used this in my code. Um, but anyway, that's that's the first version of final. Uh, the second version of final uh, should be more familiar if you come from a language like Java, which has a, you know, final is actually a, a concept in Java. And what final means there is it cannot be overridden in a subclass. So this is the first version. If we make a subclass or a class C, say this has some sort of member, which is like, I don't know, foo, you can annotate foo with final. And if you were to make a subclass D of C, uh, this final annotation means that you can't override this in a subclass. So this always has to be this value. So if you if you were to say foo equals six here, again like we did before, um, and you know at, at runtime this works because again there's no runtime checking runtime type checking for the final attributes this or the final annotation. So this this does work. Uh, however, again if we run this through MyPy you'll see that we cannot reassign this final name foo. So it prevents it prevents inheritance from overwriting this value. So that's that's the capitalized final. Those are the two cases of that. And the last I want to talk about is the final decorator. And actually I wanted to look up one thing because I wonder what if you can use it to prevent inheritance entirely. So let's get Python 3 typing. Um, should have done this before the video. <laughs> oh well. Uh, a decorator to indicate type checkers that the decorated method cannot be overwritten and a decorated class cannot be subclass. Yeah, so there's two behaviors of this this final decorator, which is different than capitalized final. So we do from typing import final. This allows us to decorate a method uh, with final. So let's say this is, you know, the hello method, uh, which just prints hello, hello world. Hello, hello world. And if we were to make another hello method here, and goodbye world. And again, because there's no runtime checking of this, we can still call d dot hello, and that will still allow us to override this method. Three t dot pi. So you can see it says goodbye world. Uh, but again, mypy will tell us that uh, we can't. Oh, it's still complaining about this one. Ah, oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, maybe it doesn't work. I did this right. Yeah, that's weird. Um, well, it looks like there might be a bug in my pie. It's supposed to error on this because this is this is an override of this. Huh. 
Well, anyway, that's how it's supposed to work. You can see that it says here that it's supposed to be an error reported by the type checker. Let's actually see if we copy and paste their example if it, if it errors properly. You put three dots here. And we need to delete this down here. Wait, why did this one work? <laughs> what am I missing here? <laughs> oh, did I forget a type annotation? I better forget a type annotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If methods aren't type annotated in Python, they don't get type checked by the type checker. So these actually have to have none. Or you can use check untyped defs, which is what I usually run my Py with, but not here. Okay, there, perfect. Okay, <laughs> thought I was thought I was losing my mind there. Um, but yeah, you can see here that now it's complaining that we can't override this method um, on this line. So this is line 13. Um, and then the, the last use is you can decorate classes, so it'll prevent the class from being subclassed entirely. So if we you know, do, do this here, uh, this will say like, you cannot inherit from C at all. And if we do that again, um, yeah, cannot inherit from final class C. This is very similar to the Java behavior. And I think this is where it was heavily inspired from. Um, the, the inheritance uh, final is useful if you wanna make a singleton so that no one else can make another, you know, another class that substitutes possibly for your singleton. Um, and the, the method override one can be helpful if you you know, want a public method, but you don't want a subclass to be able to change how that works or something like that. Um, but again, <laughs> I don't think I've ever used this in Python, and I used it very, very rarely in Java. So I, I don't personally find this all that useful, um, but you might find it useful in your code. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.